Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Edgerly, Executive Director for the Alzheimer's Association here in Northern California and Northern Nevada. And I'm so glad to have a wonderful guest, a member of our board of directors and an incredible champion for the cause with me today, Mary Liberati. Welcome, Mary. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm looking forward to this. Me too. Thanks for joining. Um, we're going to be talking throughout today's uh, Facebook Live session, and you're going to get to know Mary a little bit more in just a bit. And we'll share some things that together we've actually experienced um, in just a moment. I First off, I'd like to um, recognize that this continues to be an especially difficult time for all of us, I would venture to uh, take a guess at. And especially for those of us who have loved ones who are living with Alzheimer's or another type of dementia or who have Alzheimer's and dementia themselves. So we realize that with all that's going on around us, whether it's COVID and the pandemic and the need to be really careful about infection uh, or the fires and smoky skies, the economy, whatever, we know that life is especially difficult right now. And we want to make sure that you're aware that we are there to help you. So our 24-7 helpline is a wonderful program. And I strongly encourage you to reach out to get to talk with someone who understands and can connect you to local resources, local export experts, all free of charge. So um, please check that out. Don't hesitate. Uh, we do not want you to suffer alone. You are not alone in this. We are there with you and trying to help as much as we can. So please reach out. Um, we actually, actually, before I jump to that, Mary and I got to participate in a session not long ago, I guess maybe it was two weeks ago, uh, on women and Alzheimer's. And I know I have thought about that repeatedly since then. And so I wanted to get us started and um, Mary, just kind of hear from you. Would you mind sharing a little bit about what were your takeaways from our session on women and Alzheimer's? Well, you know, I was kind of surprised. I don't know why, but I didn't really realize that women have more of an incidence of Alzheimer's than men. I don't know. It's because we live longer, but um, so I was surprised by that. But also, you know, we tend to be the caregivers and we need to also remember that we have to take care of ourselves as caregivers. So, um, you know, one thing, Elizabeth, we were talking about the sleep. You know, one of the things is making sure we get enough sleep. But also, we need to start thinking of exercise as we do sleep because we wouldn't miss going to bed every night. But we put that exercise off and off and off. And we need to get that as a regular part of our routine to really help us. So, uh, but what, what I loved about it so much is here are these people that are so brilliant researchers that are sharing that information of, of what they're finding in the research. And it was so understandable. I mean, sometimes you, I watch the news and they have some expert come on and you kind of wonder what they said at the end, but I love the way it was just brought into terms that we knew what we could do to, to try to help ourselves take better care of ourselves and what the research is telling us. I, I completely agree with you. And if you missed the session, but you like, to, you like what you're hearing in the chat, We'll have a link so you can actually watch the Zoom of the session. It featured Dr. Laura Baker as our, as our presenter, and she's the lead investigator on the U.S. Pointer study, which looks at lifestyle and what we can do to reduce our risk. And Mary, that point that she made, Dr. Baker, we asked her, so what do you do? You know, how do you protect your brain? if anybody knows how to do it, it's Dr. Laura Baker. And she said, I think of exercise like sleep. And that really resonated with me because I have not, I will confess to you all here today, I will always go to sleep, <laughs> but I won't always exercise. And so that wasn't a hot. The other thing I've heard Dr. Baker talk about that she didn't actually uh, address in this workshop was the frequency of the exercise. So we've all heard, I think, 150 minutes of exercise a week, which can sound like a lot, I think, you know, but if you think, well, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, um, three times a week, to me, that sounds in the realm of possibility, let's say. One of the things Dr. Baker taught me is that how often you work out matters, meaning 
how long the span is between your workouts makes a difference. Because I was one of those weekend warriors, you know, I would be like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then nothing. And so she actually has taught us that that Wednesday, that hump day workout keeps those positive hormones, positive chemicals, positive effects that reduce your risk of developing cognitive impairment they stay in place. You need to be working out every 48 to 72 hours. And that was, that, I thought that was interesting. I really, she didn't say that this time, but the other thing she does is she says every time she eats, she looks at her plate and assesses, is this a brain healthy plate? Uh, can you imagine if we all did that? Um, what would happen? Be a lot of changes, uh, at least for myself. I don't know about you, Mary. Well, definitely, because thinking that your plate should be half vegetables or fruits, fruits and vegetables, I mean, that's a big difference because I think sometimes like my starches are half the plate, you know, yeah, pizza. so just making some simple changes like that can really yeah. start adding up to help you. Absolutely. So I encourage you all to check that out. Another thing I want to share, we, we are um, really proud this month that uh, our uh, the work in California, and in some cases in Northern California in particular, was featured in our magazine. So our Alls magazine, uh, we have, I believe it was seven different stories that featured work taking place in California or in Northern California. So check it out. There's work, um, there's information about Governor Newsom's Alzheimer's Task Force, and we have both board members and staff members who were represented on that task force, really important work with Maria Shriver. We're very proud to be a part of that. And that is wrapping up now or has wrapped up. We also have an article on Kunle Adewale. He is an amazing artist who did an event for the longest day. And actually, by the way, has a new book out. Uh, the US Pointer Study is featured and we have a site at Davis. Uh, more on women and Alzheimer's, this time featuring a researcher from Kaiser in Northern California. Information on early detection by Gil Rabinovici at UCSF. And Richard Louie, I don't know if you all forgive my phone, I won't be able to shut it off while I'm over here. Um, Richard Louie, the um, a broadcaster is actually a bi-coastal individual with family members living in San Francisco, and he's featured. So if you're interested, check it out. You see it's at alz.org slash mag. It's free. It's a wonderful publication, and we invite you to check that out. Um, great way to keep up to date. So Mary, can you talk to everybody about the walk is everywhere? What, what does that mean? Um, exactly. I, I get a lot of questions about this notion of walk is everywhere. How, I, that I love it. I just love it because, you know, I don't have a walk in my town. We, I go to, to Reno Sparks uh, in Nevada and I live in Carson City. So to me, it's come to my neighborhood and it's come to everybody's neighborhood everywhere. So, you know, we, we have a lot of rural areas here in Nevada. So the fact that our rural neighbors can be participating. We're walking in our neighborhoods or on paths that we have in our, in our communities. Um, wherever you have a nice place that you like to walk, whether it's on a nice woodland trail or if it's right around your neighborhood, around the block, you know, you could be walking anywhere. So I love it because I think we have a lot more visibility this year. Mm -hmm. And this year with the little flags, oh, yeah. you know, I think it also helped again, our flags are everywhere. So they're in towns, whether a walk is held in that town or not, or that city, it's it's um, all over the state this year, which I think is fantastic because people that have, you know, supported us in the past that haven't been in a town that has the actual walk, they bring it now, they've got it right in their front yard with the little flags, you know, out, have your flags out in the front yard, put them on your car, put them, you know, in your windows if you're in an apartment. So, you know, there's so much that I think has brought it more home I mean, we're all stuck a little bit at, more at home these days, and we brought the walk right into our homes, which I love, because uh, I, I think too. we've got more people that have been interested in it, supporting us, uh, and just more visibility, because that's the other thing, is we want to make sure people know that services are still being delivered, families need the help, we've got the hotline, and the, well, the uh, helpline 24-7,
And I think sometimes you hear things are shutting down, you don't realize the Alzheimer's Association is not shut down. Oh, no. Our people are there helping people every day. And it's good to remind people that it's a resource. So I'm just really excited. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Great. Yeah, it's interesting. In some ways, it's easier than ever to participate, isn't it? Um, I was with my husband. We um, we were up in Sonora, which is about two and a half hours from, from home. And I saw a champion sign, someone's yard, and I almost drove off the <laughs> I was like, wait, there's, and it's, you know, what a wonderful thing um, to see the flags in people's planters and just know that we are all together in this, uh, that the walk is everywhere. I should tell everybody, so if you're just joining, I'm Elizabeth Edgerly, Executive Director here in Northern California and Northern Nevada, and I'm joined today by the wonderful, the fabulous Mary Liberati from our board of directors, who is a key leader for us in the state of Nevada, in particular in Northern Nevada, but really the whole state, and is the chair of the Reno Sparks Walk this year. So she, she's really stepping up. Um, Mary, so how did you get involved? How did you get involved in working with the Alzheimer's Association and the walk? Well, you know, I got involved back in the, uh, I think it was the 1980s, uh, with wow. the, the university in Las Vegas. We had a, a professor that was a researcher, and he was starting a brain bank. And I didn't even know what a brain bank was back in those days, but I'm a social worker by, by profession. And so over the last 40 years, I spent a lot of time with families that um, have dealt with many issues, but so many more were developing dementia in the families and having difficulty because we didn't have a lot of services back in those days in to 80s. help people. Mm -mm. And so, you know, so I seen the struggle that these families go through. And then as more and more families are finding out, I had a family member, he didn't live in my state, he lived in Michigan, but um, he got dementia uh, and Alzheimer's in particular. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it kind of hit home because now it's my family being affected by it, just like millions of other families are affected yeah. by it. So, um, you know, I just, and, and just seeing these families over the 40 years, I got involved probably about 10 years ago, uh, wanting to support because I appreciate the services so much and how great the support groups are when you're struggling with this as a family and, and, and the sharing that goes on in those support groups that, um, you know, little tips that people have figured out to, hey, try this, it works for me, maybe it'll work for you. And, you know, so I just, I just love it. The, um, the association the, is such a wonderful association, but also the staff. I've loved interacting with the staff. Um, they're so helpful. You know, if they don't know an answer, they say, you know, we're gonna try to find out the answer for you. So it's just a really great resource for families that are um, living with Alzheimer's and anybody that wants to support those families. So I, I think it's terrific. I'm just really fortunate that I found such a great organization to volunteer my time with. Oh, well, we're fortunate to have you, absolutely, and so grateful for everything you're doing. I do want to mention, if you're thinking, I want to be like Mary, um, and you want to participate in a walk, or you want to be on a committee, or you want to volunteer, we're always looking for volunteers. Admittedly, this year is a little different, but we are modifying and working around, and we're doing everything we can, and we always need volunteers and supporters and champions. So please reach out and let us know if you'd like to get more involved. Um, Mary, I, I, let's start talking about the walks that are coming up. I think we've got, let's see, this weekend, we have two walks coming up. We have the East Bay Walk, and we have your very own Reno Sparks, now Carson City Walk, um, right in your backyard. And then the, the last walk for our territory is San Francisco, one of the biggest walks in the country, a beautiful walk in San Francisco this year on November 7th. I think we have some things to celebrate um, and thank folks for. Um, let me just see what I got. I will start with the East Bay kudos, and then would you be willing to help us do the shout outs for the Reno Sparks? Definitely, okay. definitely. All right, um, so for our East Bay Walk, we have so many people to thank. We're just only gonna be able to scratch the surface, um, but I love that the top team is Boonies Buddies and Pam Montana on this screen holding the blue flower 
Um, Pam, mwah, we love you. You are our hero. Pam is living with Alzheimer's and she's an incredible spokesperson. Uh, she is an incredible fundraiser and mover and shaker. And um, I wish that she did not have Alzheimer's. If I ever developed Alzheimer's, I would wish that I could do what Pam does and really change the world um, through it. And truly she has. So um, thank you, Pam. And I think she's going to be our guest next Facebook Live. So you all, nice. all get a chance to meet Pam if you hadn't. haven't. She is a, she's a, an amazing individual. And I want to give shout outs to Troy, Troy Channing, our walk chair. Thank you, Troy. And our co-chair, Emily Sanders Lee. Emily is moving away. And when I saw it on Facebook, I, I think it took my, my breath away because she's been such an important uh, leader for our walk committee. Um, Emily, if you're watching, I wanted to share with you um, what some of your, your colleagues, your staff partners have said. Brittany shared, there's no words to express how much Emily will be missed. Her volunteerism was next level. She's incredibly creative, innovative, and above all, extremely dedicated to the walk and, and the cause. Um, Emily, we truly wish you all the best and we will miss you so much, but we're um, really happy for you and your family and um, wish you all the best. So that walk right now, I don't have our current numbers, but I can tell you, by the way, Boonies Buddies has raised over $33,000. Wow. One team, amazing. And Pam Montana has raised over 15,000 and she is closely followed by Jim Voorhees and Team Stacy, which is also an amazing team. They're right on her heels at $14,000. So thank you to everyone who's participating in that walk. It's gonna be a beautiful day, I hope on Saturday for you. And now, Reno Sparks. So Mary, tell us about your top performers for Reno. Yes, we're really pleased. Our top team is Sigma Kappa with the University of Nevada uh, in Reno, and which is great because there's a lot of like, young people to get involved with this. And we do love to have younger people helping us. They've got that energy. They've got all that social media skill. So it's always great to have them. And they've raised over $16,000 so far. And I guess one thing I would say is that even though that's what they raised now and we're gonna have our walk in just two days, uh, we accept money for the walk all the way till December. So if you um, you know, are out there raising money, don't stop this weekend, keep, keep it going. Uh, but they've raised over $16,000 so far. Our top individual is Frank Shipman. And he, I love this, he has a team called Team Shippy Nevada, which I think is a really cute name. You know, people name their teams with all kinds of, I mean, my team is Sherry's grandma, Sarah, but um, everybody can put their own spin to it. It's really a lot of fun. And he's raised over $11,000 so far. So, um, you know, it's really terrific, but uh, these numbers could change. As I said, these are the numbers at this point in time, but money yeah. is, keeps coming in. We'll so keep, we'll just keep, keep adding going. it. Yeah. And Mary, thank you for being our our committee chair and for your leadership, um, especially this year. It's been admittedly a new experience. <laughs> well, you know, I, I was telling somebody, you know, they said, how do you get involved in all these things? And I said, you know, I don't really go looking for it. It's just a lot of times people just ask me, you know. Yeah. So, you know, but I'm going to tell you, don't wait till somebody asks you. If you have a desire to get involved, we would love oh, to have you come join us. So, yeah, you know, you're always welcome. And we certainly um, love to have new energy and new viewpoints and perspectives brought to us. Absolutely. I just want to make a comment um, about this year because it, it really is obviously you know, a very different year. And we're, we're working hard to hold our own. Uh, everything, everything has trunk <laughs> in terms of you know how much money we're able to raise how many participants we have but what we're seeing is that while we have fewer participants fewer walkers those of you who are involved are stepping up and really helping us maintain and so we're so grateful to you and i i want you to know it's making a difference it makes it possible for us to weather this storm and that's what we're trying to do we want to be there for these families we want to continue to champion research and public policy 
and care and support, and we're gonna make it through. But thank you to all of you for your support and, and Mary, um, people like you are really making us, uh, making the difference even more right now. So thank you for that. So we have some um, events coming up. Actually, before I do the events, I want to um, talk about another type of dementia that we haven't discussed. And Mary, feel free to jump in on this if you have anything to share about it. But you know, we, we always want to clarify that our vision is a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. And we actually made that explicit in about a year ago, where we wanted to make sure everybody understood that it does include all dementias, because sometimes our name, Alzheimer's Association, might make you think, well, that doesn't include me. My mom, my mom had Lewy body dementia. But actually, our full name has always been the Alzheimer's and Related Disorders Association. It was a big mouthful, which is why they modified it, just to make it simpler. But I think some people took that to mean that they were not welcome or that we didn't have resources for them. And I do want to clarify, we represent all dementias and we are working on all dementias. So one I wanted to highlight today is one we haven't talked as much about on Facebook Live, and that is Down syndrome and mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. And uh, because October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month, we wanted to highlight this. Uh, some of you may or may not know that as individuals living with Down Syndrome get older, their risk of developing Alzheimer's is quite significant. And for those who live into their 50s, um, it could be as many as 30%, maybe more. I think a lot are not ever diagnosed, actually. And uh, individuals who are in their 60s and living with Down syndrome are at 50% risk. So it's almost like it moves the statistics up two decades um, if you have Down syndrome. And you might be wondering, well, why is that? Well, it's really the genetics. It's the genetics of Down syndrome, the genetics of Alzheimer's. And if I had a MIN diagram, you would see a big overlap there that one of the genes in Alzheimer's that is an absolutely known determinant risk factor. Uh, so not a, not a question, but yeah, if you have this gene, yeah, you're gonna experience issues, is the APP gene. And it's located on chromosome 21, which is the chromosome that individuals with Down syndrome inherit an extra copy of. So instead of two copies of chromosome 21, they get one more copy. So because the APP gene is located there, it's like they get an extra dose of APP and APP relates to amyloid production. So I realize for some of you, you're like, what is she talking about? But let me just clarify, that's what we think is causing plaques to build up in the brain. And we know that that gene really packs a packs a wallop. And so we not only have information on our website about Down syndrome, and we have services for people with Down syndrome and Alzheimer's. We fund research currently. Uh, you actually, um, San Diego, UCSD, one of the researchers we worked with up here moved there. He's got a very strong Down syndrome and Alzheimer's uh, program. And so there are experts across the country that we have funded. NIH, the National Institute on Health, also funds research and we advocate for that. Um, the other thing I wanna mention to you, and maybe we can put this in the chat, is that we have two blogs on Down syndrome and Alzheimer's. We have um, Marianne from Down Syndrome Connection and Paula Gann, whose daughter Kyle is living with Alzheimer's. I have a dear friend who, um, I've been working with her and her family. What can happen sometimes is for individuals with Down syndrome living in a group home or living in the community, if they develop Alzheimer's or dementia symptoms, they might be booted out because their care needs change and it's not a good fit for a group home with people with developmental disabilities. And it just, it's just like, you think you, you've got it set, you think you're doing okay, and then the apple cart is turned over. And um, so if you know someone who could use additional help support, please encourage them to reach out. 
They can participate in our support group, which meets, by the way, the third Thursday of the month from six to seven. And that'll be in the comments. We've got the phone number and the email of Marianne, who's our lead on that, a volunteer. And um, we would love to have you come or share that information with others. All right, so we've got some upcoming events and then I think we're, we're coming to the end here. We're getting there. Oh, so we've got some educational events. We have a Vietnamese Alzheimer's Pro Forum that is in Vietnamese and English coming up on Halloween. So check that out and please share that resource. We certainly want to reach the Vietnamese community in particular, but all are welcome. And on November 7th, we have an Alzheimer's Caregiver and Wellness Conference that you can also access. And now you can access it from the comfort of your living room. And last but not least, our African American Alzheimer's Forum, an annual event that's going to be November 14th. So check those out. Go to our website and you can get more information. You have to register to get the, the Zoom info, but check those out. All right, I think I um, have covered this part. Um, all right, let's see. Mary, did I miss anything? Let's see. Well, I, I just wanted to share that one of the highlights of all our walks is a promise garden where we have our um, flower pinwheels that are different colored based on whether it's someone living with um, dementia, whether it's somebody that is a caregiver or whether it's somebody that's an advocate or a supporter. And so we have purple and orange and yellow flowers that we usually love. Well, that you can see them behind you and behind me. Mm -hmm. um, we usually have them out on a grassy area with the wind blowing them. It's People love it. They love to take pictures in front of it. Unfortunately, since we can't gather together this year, we are putting together drive-by gardens. Oh, wow. And I know I saw the one in San Jose was fantastic. It, it was good. Like a whole yeah. block. It was I really drove nice. kind of quickly, but you saw it whiz by. <laughs> it was it was nice to see it. And um, so this year in, in Nevada, we'll have Reno up at the Sparks Marina, where is where we usually hold our walk. Beautiful. There will be a promise garden with the drive by. Uh, people can drive by and see it. And then here in Carson City, we're going to have it in front of the legislative building. So nice. it's it's right on Main Street. Again, people will be driving by, which I love, you know, brings the legislature's attention to it, but also um, just people that are driving by and gives them that extra awareness that we're out there fighting for folks that are living with Alzheimer's and that anybody and other dementia, and they can join us anytime. So we always look for people that want to join us. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. And thank you all for joining us. Mary, thank you for joining me today. It's really a, a treat to do this with you. And um, oh, I forgot. Yes. I was going to ask Mary what her walk uniform is. You can see we take things very seriously when it comes to walk. And she has uh, her purple garb. You know, we're in the Wild West, so I have to have a purple bandana. <laughs> and I've got my uh, antennae. I, I always figure you can't be sad when you're wearing antennae. So it's a good walk thing because it's uplifting. And it shows that we are all in it together, actually having fun and doing good in the world. So, oh, I'm glad you reminded me of that. Our next Facebook Live event will be November 5th at 1 30 and you can check it out um, on facebook at alzheimer's california thanks so much for joining us today have a wonderful week have a great halloween between now and then and we'll see you at a walk near you thank you bye-bye